Hey, Bob the BP here, and welcome to Woo Dev Chat, a Do the Woo podcast show. Woo! Woo! Today's show is brought to you by Hostinger. Whether you are a small or large agency or a freelancer, learn more about their Woo and WordPress hosting options at hostinger.com. And Avalara, if you have clients who sell in the EU or UK, Make sure they know about cross-border and international selling with their Avatax, which you can find on the Woo Marketplace. I'll tell you more about our sponsors later in the show, but grab your favorite beverage as we dive into the end of the year Woo Dev Chat with Zach and Carl. And to be honest, when I let these two loose for an hour, I'm not even going to try and summarize our conversation. I was even reluctant to ask ChatGPT as well, because it might be filled with hallucinations. So instead, sit back and enjoy this last Deb Chat for the year. Welcome to another Do The Woo Dev Chat. I'm Zach Stepik, and I'm uh, here again with my esteemed co-host, Carl Alexander. Carl, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, it's like the holidays, but also it's becoming the age of darkness and Canada, so uh, there's not a lot of light left. And so, if you suffer from seasonal depression a bit, like me, I'm like, oh my god, it's like sunsets at like four now. So it's not far off from that here in northern Illinois. So yeah, yeah, you're you're really far north too. So it's probably about the same thing for you. But I always find it challenging at this time of the year once we're getting close to the winter solstice. Yeah, once we've done the let's make it you know make everything an hour earlier for uh turning the clocks back it seems to it seems that it's always going to be darker earlier than i want it to right yeah so we're not gonna get into a dst i mean we could i'm pretty sure we both have uh but i mean nobody likes it it's like it's like beating a a dead horse at this point that's true that's true uh so let's move on to other subjects you were in japan now you're home how was the whole japan trip it's good i honestly this is like if i had to do like my year in review japan's awesome i love tokyo basically (laughs) that's like that's it like i spent three months there this year it's uh it's really kind of wild when i think about it that i spent a quarter of my year yeah that's awesome yeah and in tokyo i only left tokyo for two days uh i for my whole time there and it was to go see the nippon series final so it's like basically the world series the japan equivalent of the world series finals game i went to osaka to see a, a game of that so that was like the only trip out of the city that I did. That sounds like a lot of fun, though. Um, sounds like it would be a great trip. It was. I'm not a baseball fan, but luckily, it, you know, we got eight innings of really especially boring. I'm trying to say it was is not boring, but it was super boring, basically, especially with my ADHD. And then the last inning was like hype. It was hype. Everybody was like screaming. It was like crazy. And, you know, oh hits were being made on the ball it wasn't just like strikeouts and (laughs) walks so it was just like it was good so that was really exciting by the beginning i was like wow that is an expensive trip to see just nothing happen yeah i i have trouble with baseball i i like it more in person than i do um like on tv because at least in person you have some things you can go do right You can get some food. You can, you know, have something to drink. Yeah, exactly. I did that at some point. I spent like half an hour just going in and looking at the baseball food in Japan is not baseball food in the U.S. Like, no, I can imagine it's not. And uh, (laughs) it's not even close. I mean, it's probably pretty good, though. Like, I, I think the only thing they have because they're obsessed, they're obsessed with KFC over there. So there was a KFC Actually, there, so I was, so the final was Osaka has two teams. So it was Osaka versus Osaka, which never happened. Hmm. And the Osaka Tigers had this curse on them, which is related to KFC. Basically, basically they, they got cursed because when the, I forget the whole story, but they threw 
a, a statue of the colonel into a river and basically they couldn't get it back and the team was cursed since then like i'm i'm probably messing up the whole story but basically they thought they were cursed because they threw this kfc statue and <laughs> this colonel statue into the river uh in osaka that's awesome so it was kind of funny so they called it the colonel's curse uh, i mean i've had that a few times they hadn't won since that they'd done that and then they won and it, they threw a guy disguised as a ter- colonel into the river. So we were like, you're playing with fire. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. but they love, they love KFC. There's also like the KFC, like Christmas. Like that's where people go for Christmas. I, I don't know the whole story around that, but like they're obsessed with KFC for Christmas. Like on Christmas day, that's what you do. You go to KFC and you get KFC chicken. Is that kind of like the, uh, it's a whole thing. The tradition of after Thanksgiving is over and everything here, we uh, we sometimes will order Asian food for dinner that night because it's the only thing open. No, <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I think there's a different reason for that in Japan, basically. I love that. I love Asian food. So it's like I do too. Yeah. But yeah, they're obsessed with KFC over there. It's like it's it's crazy. So that's the only thing I think an American would recognize at uh, oh, they have pizza. But no hot dogs. I don't think they had any hot huh. dogs. So just uh, so pizza. That's fun. But you could get a lot of grilled stuff. <laughs> like if you like octopus, you could get octopus on a octopus on a on a stick. I consider octopus to be uh, the best delivery device for wasabi. So okay, okay, I I can believe that. Anyway, but yeah, so that was uh, Japan. That's awesome. That was my last Japan. Yeah. What about you? Uh, you know, the, the year has been, uh, interesting, right? As, as most people know, um, the company that I was working for at the beginning of the year, uh, was acquired and then eliminated a whole bunch of positions. And, uh, so I left that company, um, in April and then landed, uh, at Convesio, which has been fun. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a good year overall. I, I think that I'm happier now than I've been in a long time and where my role is and what I'm doing, uh, which is good. Um, I'm challenged on a daily basis, which is great. I enjoy challenges, right? That's the, the thing that makes a developer a developer, I believe is the, the love of tackling challenges. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some I I'm now at a I just turned forty two this year, so that's and I have my older developer friends that are like now getting into the, like the their grumpy old developer stage of their <laughs> life, and they don't want to learn anything new. Like they're just like, why can't we do this the old way? I'm like, this isn't that, you didn't you signed up for the wrong field if you don't want things to change, or you could go do kobold, you know, like. Uh, then nothing changes. The only thing I bought uh, over Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend was uh, a lifetime Laracast subscription. That was it. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know. Uh, like, one of the things that I really want to talk about, like, next year is, like, chat GPT. Like, how, like, it affected how I work, how I get information. Like, I think Laracast is good, but like soon, like I'll just be able to ask. Like, I can. Al- I already asked ChatGPT. Like, how do I do this? And then it just like writes it all out for me, and it's like usually correct or mostly correct. So I'm just like, it's like a really weird one, but it's good to support people that do all this educational content too. So that's good. Well, and that was my main reason. You know, Jeffrey Way has worked so hard to build a community and a site around you now the Laravel ecosystem and being a part of that by becoming a lifetime supporter just made sense to me. Um, you know, I, I firmly believe that, um, and we'll talk a little bit about predictions later, but uh, I firmly believe that one of my predictions for, 2024 will come true and that is that we will see uh more people using tools like laravel alongside wordpress to 
augment what WordPress can do. I mean, I, I, I think that's already, I mean, that's like half my consulting work is like most of my consulting work is doing something that's kind of for WordPress, but with Laravel basically. Uh, yeah. And I think that's going to be more prevalent, right? We're at the forefront, right? We, we sit at the edge of what people are doing, uh, generally, because I think you and I, we tend to move faster. Tell me about it. Tell me about serverless and how I'm the only person on the planet that knows how this shit works with WordPress. You know, you and I tend to move faster than most people. We like to live at the bleeding edge because that's just who we are as people. And I think that we'll start to see the rest of the community start to catch up in that area. So, um, yeah. But I'd, actually, speaking of grumpy old programmers, I was I had this thought the the other day. Like, I feel like WordPress sometimes is the grumpy old programmer of like <laughs> web development. They're like, why do we have to do this differently? Like, it's worked for us for twenty years. Like, why? Like, you know, like why do we need custom tables for orders? I mean, that yeah, exactly. Why why can't we just use what we've been using for twenty years? It's worked fine till now. <laughs> like, why are you causing so much trouble? You know, it's just it's just part of our community, right? There's the WordPress way. Right. And that hasn't changed for a long time. But it's such a contrast. You talk about Laravel, like Laravel is like the complete opposite. They're like, wow, this sounds cool. Like, I don't know what the use of this is yet, but like, let's go. And yeah, let's do it. Let's let's build it. Because they, they do stuff that most other programming languages don't even do too. like it's just so it's like completely it's such a like two two complete opposites basically of like so that's always why it's interesting interacting with both these communities uh at the same time and it's really kind of interesting because both communities have kind of a visionary figurehead right sure sure Let, let's call a visionary figurehead yeah I'm, I'm trying to be you know diplomatic um but taylor build so much just crazy stuff constantly and i mean all all of the laravel ecosystem grew from this this origin of taylor just creating crazy things that he wanted yeah then he doesn't want to maintain it so he's slowly hiring people to maintain all this stuff that he doesn't want to maintain right exactly he builds it launches it and then he's like yeah, I'm done here. Like, I'm off to the next shiny. Yeah, and and that's fine. That's that's great. And the I I I know a lot of developers that wish they could do that. So. And the juxtaposition of that is, you know, we we built built WordPress and we continue to build WordPress, and we just the the new things that we've introduced become points of controversy, right? It's not, oh, look at this shiny new thing I can do really cool stuff with. It's, oh, I want a plugin that disables all this new stuff because I don't want to change. Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's pros and cons. Like, I think for Gutenberg, it's like, it's a, it's you're allowed to want a different writing experience than what it offers. I, but yeah. No, I agree. But it like, I mean, even without going into that, like, just like, getting optimizations done in the code or just like getting the rest api in like it was like that was a like now we're like oh the rest api that's the greatest thing ever like we love it it's like oh my god was it a lot of work to get that to like get merged in to to core it was just like it's just a lot of of fighting absolutely um yeah of like pushback which is like good and bad, but it's also like, you know, you gotta, you gotta grow. And part of that is that we're really careful, right? About what we include. We're really careful about what gets put out there because when you power as much of the internet as we do, which is, you know, over four out of every 10 websites. So like it's four and a half out of every 10 websites now. Um, when you power that much of the internet, I, I agree and disagree with that. I feel I've like the the latest 6.4 um situation with the request library could have been very much um avoided if we just didn't want to reinvent cuz that we go slow 
and and things but we also love like <laughs> core loves to reinvent the wheel basically you know well and i i think that was those changes were important the thing is that there is not enough currently testing happening on the hosting side well i mean testing and like calvin was i think you saw calvin like it's like we're giving shit to host but like the, it's like a 10 year version of curl basically so yeah yeah and so we, do we need to examine as a community is this a problem that we have this 10 year old version of a core library sitting on servers probably should we probably do something to update that yeah probably um do we have a lot of legacy issues in hosting yeah Absolutely. There are some hosts that, uh, you know, can't run modern versions of PHP yet because their, their stack isn't ready for it. Right. And that's crazy to me. Meanwhile, PHP 8.3 just came out. I saw that. Uh, I, I updated, um, herd to, uh, have PHP 8.3 available. So, I've moved from Valet over to Herd, uh, which is kind of fun. Oh, yeah, the the native app. It's the same thing, but it's the native native app. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's been yeah, you know, it's been really interesting to see that there are some hosts that are quick to update, and then there are some hosts that are just they're happy being where they are. You know, they're happy with Memcache. They're happy with you know the the stack they've been running forever. Like uh, Automatic's still a Memcached um, yep. hosting company. Uh, they don't use Redis. And it it all it seems really interesting that there are some places where they're happy there, and that's great. You know, if they're getting the performance they need and their customers are happy, that's all that really matters. Uh, apart from security. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the the whole saying, right? i I was a sysadmin. If you if it works, don't touch it. You know, like so. I I get that. Like it's really hard to like develop like a test suite too for like tech stacks. Um, so, cause there's a lot of moving parts, right? Like unless you're like in a Docker container or something like that, like it's just, there's a lot of moving parts to like a server machine. So, well, and we have a testing suite um, in the hosting uh, group, but in make hosting, we have a testing suite that's been written. But is it perfect? No. Um, and we know that. And there's plan. There are plans to rebuild it and make it better, uh, and to you know provide even more coverage than what's there now. Uh, but even that test suite wouldn't have known that a ten-year-old version of curl was uh, going to be an issue, right? So th- there are areas where we don't have coverage right now where things like this would be easier to discover if there was an easier to run test suite that every host committed to running every time a release candidate was available and we were consistent about it but we're not yet we're getting there but we're not there yet um so that was an interesting part of this year and uh just so everybody knows the point of this episode now that we're 18 minutes in is really to just talk about what we have seen and done over the last year. Um, So we're going to take a look at the, the episodes that we recorded this year a little bit and, and talk about some of the things that we've discussed. Um, If there was any one theme for the year, um, I'd have to say it was definitely performance and, uh, and high high performance order storage. Uh, we did a lot of talking about HPOS and the rollout of HPOS and what that was going to mean and what it was going to do. Uh, but let's go to the start of our year, which our year didn't start till February. Um, but in February, we talked about multi tenant WooCommerce sites. Yeah, they're called, they changed, it was WPCS, and now they're called WildCloud? WildCloud. So uh, they've gotten a little wild on us, uh, but great new rebrand from them. 
Uh, but we started out talking about multi-tenant sites, and of course, we talked about performance. Um, and then, you know, the the first episodes uh, with other hosts actually happened uh, this year, I believe. Um, well, I mean, there were some other Wu Dev chats in 2022 that had other hosts, um, but uh, we really we had some other episodes that came in, which were really cool to see. Um, there was a chat about WordPress blocks, uh, that, that happened. And then in April, you and I talked with Devin price at universal yums. Yeah, that was a fun one. Their universal yums. And they just had, uh, their biggest sales day over this black Friday, cyber Monday weekend. Um, Devin tweeted about it, and they had a really, really great uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, which is always nice to see. Um, you know, they had a high throughput of orders per per minute, which was, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a hard task to, to get a high number of orders per minute. Uh, so nice to see a company doing, you know, a large volume of orders on WooCommerce over Black Friday. And there were some really great things there, right? When we were talking about generating 10,000 orders an hour uh, when their subscriptions were new and uh, selling 8 million orders. He was talking about his database backups earlier this year, like in the post status chat too. That was like interesting. Like, um, Database backups are always one of the most challenging things that nobody wants to think about. But um, when you start having <clears throat> gigabytes of data or a different like um, structure, like more tables also causes like some issues as well. So it's just like, um, yeah. So database backups are always a tricky thing when you start having uh, large sites. So like how to do restores, how to do it in a timely manner. Um, like he was saying, like, I think for them, it takes them 24 hours before like WP engine gets them a backup. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And then, um, just the, the thought of, you know, having shipped 8 million boxes to people. Yeah. I mean, that's another logistic thing. That's not even software. That's like just pure logistics. That's huge scale. And yeah, I'm just really, really happy to see that that team's doing as well as it is. Um, you know, so it was nice to to get to talk with Devin some about the unique challenges that they've had as the largest subscription store that I'm aware of. Uh, and if you have a bigger subscription store, reach out. We want to talk to you because I think that would be, I think that would be awesome. Or if you do a lot more orders per hour than ten thousand, basically, yeah. Talk to us. Yeah, I, we'd love to hear about anything scale, anything scale in WooCommerce. Like yum 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 yum. We'd love to hear about your journey and and talk about like the challenges you faced. Yep, challenges. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So then we we took May off. I don't remember what was going on, but maybe it was uh, WordCamp Europe. No, Europe was in. It was in June. June so. Why did we take yeah. May off? I don't remember. I forget. Um, I, May seems like an eternity. It does. Me, it so. really does. But in June, we talked with Sean Conklin uh, about locks and full site editing. I was in Greece at the time. And Bob described it as us covering a lot of developer ground, and he meant a lot, uh, which basically means somewhere along the episode, we lost Bob. Uh <laughs> at some point he came back and, and listened to it again to uh be able to summarize everything and his summary was they covered a lot they covered a lot it was a lot so we talked about staging we talked a little bit about ai we talked about blocks we talked about performance we talked about why woo is better than shopify uh lots and lots of fun during that episode and uh you know, we got to talk to uh, to Sean as a peer, and it was it was just 
that's what we love, right? Being able to have those conversations. Um, but uh, the the title of that episode uh, is Block's Full Site Editing Performance and More. But the title of the page that it's on is a full-on WooCommerce developer chat. So full-on. Uh, that tells you exactly how into the weeds we got. <laughs> um, and then in July, we talked about building point of sale uh, with the, the folks from Oliver POS uh, and the journey of building a point of sale system. Um, and then in August... We had a great conversation with Justin from A2 Hosting, uh, where we talked about hosting and performance. Uh, and, you know, the fact that both Carl, you, and I are in the hosting space uh, means that we do tend to talk about hosting quite a bit, right? Because it's related to performance at a deep level. And so as we go through these topics we we tend to uh we tend to go back and and talk about hosting a lot because you know that ever important time to first bite and all that php execution is all dependent on your host right and so you know these are important metrics when you're talking about e-commerce uh where every millisecond matters and every 100 milliseconds lost is a 1% reduction in sale according to an Amazon study, right? 1% reduction in sales if you're doing millions a month, that's a lot of money. Right? And if you and if your time to first bite is 700 milliseconds milliseconds slower than your competitor, well, you don't have a lot of time to load things if you're taking, you know, a second of your time just to get the server to respond. Uh, so th- these are important things. And so we talked with Justin some about performance and hosting. Uh, we did that again in November when we talked about uh, difficult woo sites with Tom Finelli uh, at Convesio and Ben Gabler from uh, Rocket.net. Um, and we talked about a little more about coding standards and plugins and what they do to affect everything that's running. Um, and, you know, just to go back in October, we talked about uh, the contributor orientation tool on WordPress.org and why it's so important to contribute. Oh, yeah, with Milana and... And Alexander, yes. Alexander, yes. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a great conversation as well, just talking about uh, how some of these tools that are part of our ecosystem get built, right? Try to onboard more contributors. Exactly. And so um, that's those were our episodes for the year. And, you know, as I look back, I'm, I'm really proud of what we've been able to put together uh, over the course of 2023. Uh, we've had some, some great conversations, and I hope that the conversations we're having are resonating with our audience. But the only way we know if they're resonating or not, is if you tell us, right? I'll keep talking anyways until Bob cuts me off. So <laughs> me too. But you know, we um if you have feedback for us, we want to hear it, even if it's bad, right? Even if it's and there is no bad feedback. Let's just or guest ideas. Yeah. Yeah. There there's anything. There is no bad feedback. If you want to tell us that that Carl and I laugh too much, uh, that's fine. We're gonna keep doing it. I've definitely had somebody tell me in my life that I smile too much. So you never know. You never know the feedback you'll get. So it's not, it's not possible. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely possible. <laughs> it's a story for another time. But, you know, I hosted a podcast back in my, uh, in my rich internet application days, back when I was a flex developer, uh, I was a co-host of a podcast called Rhea radio. And that was a, fee- a piece of feedback we actually got from people is that we didn't take things seriously enough. Yeah, I'm never going to be that guy. So, you know, we're going to uh, we're going to be doing some new things. You know, we've we've got a new site coming for Do the Woo. Which- yeah, it'll be easier for you to give us feedback with the once the new site 
gets live. You can just harass Bob about it. Be like, Bob, when's the where's the new site? For now, uh, just send all of your your questions, comments, concerns, and presents to uh, Bob. Everything you'd like, uh, you know. And if if you uh, if you can wait until hopefully January, maybe February, right? Uh, the the site is getting relaunched and we're going to have some great stuff uh, on the, the relaunched site, uh, including an easier way for you to give feedback. So uh, until then, just bug Bob on all social channels at all hours of the day and night um, as we will continue to do as well. He's everywhere. We bother him 24 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> so, and and Bob has just put in our chat here as we're recording uh, that that should be hashtag bub, bug bob. I like it. Bug bob. Hashtag bug bob. Um, now I have to find like a little bug thing. Yes. And put like <laughs> hashtag bug like bug bob. A bearded bug with a hat. That that sounds like an upcoming sticker we need to get made for do the woo. I'll just have chat GPT to do it for me. Like you know, uh, AI is an illustrator now. So we can actually go into Illustrator. I can't wait to do, honestly, I don't have the time right now, but I, I can't wait to have it do like the, the Emir story that I want it to do. Like, <laughs> because I keep talking about like, why did it, people keep asking me why I picked the name and I have like this whole story and I just want, like, want to have illustration. It'll be cool also for like swag and stuff. But yeah, like, I don't know, like. ChatGPT winner, it turned one year old today. Uh, I apparently, yeah, apparently I, I, I logged in and it had a little like birthday hat. So it's like, I, I'm one year old today. So happy birthday, ChatGPT. You definitely are my MVP of uh, 2023 for sure. As a builder or an agency managing multiple sites, check out hostinger.com. Their infrastructure brings your client's site speed, uptime, and security. Also, at your fingertips, you'll find a powerful suite of tools for security and performance, code and content management. Now add to that the ability to manage your WordPress website through WP CLI for control configuration and plugin updates, enhanced WordPress acceleration powered by Lightspeed Enterprise, control over auto updates, free migrations, and of course, the essential staging sites. Through all of their services and features comes e-commerce optimization for your clients' woo shops. So when you think about it, overall, everything you need to keep your client sites running smooth can be found with their agency hosting at hostinger.com. Do you have clients who sell into or across the EU and UK? Likely you may not know about cross-border or international selling, or maybe you need to learn a little bit more because a little knowledge goes a long ways. And with Avalara's Woo integration via Avalara's Avatox, you can help your clients focus on selling while not having to worry about determining tax rates even with various product types. They use automation to make VAT and sales tax calculation faster, easier, and more accurate with their built-in VAT calculation. Just go to the Woo Marketplace over on WooCommerce.com and search for our Avalara's Avatax. Who would have thought? I mean, we had Copilot in 2022, right? But Yeah, but I was never that hyped about Copilot. I'm right. It, it's still kind of, it's it's a cool tool, right? But it's not like the same. Well, apparently the new version that you can get in, in Visual Studio uh, code, like, I don't know if that's what you use. I use PHP Storm. Um, there's a like, there's a preview or there's like the next version of it. And it, it has more chat GPT like behavior in it. Like you can have it like, you can have it discuss code with it. But um, like for me, it's always been kind of like just a, really handy but it's an autocomplete so it's uh it wasn't really good for me you have to start it right if starting is your problem then well it's not as helpful as it could be yeah 
I mean, my goal for 2024, uh, I already talked to one of the organizers for WordCamp Asia. So they kind of like added me in like as a organizer recommendation. But like I want to do a talk on like how to use GPT like uh, effectively. Uh, I will probably apply to WordCamp Europe with that topic. But I think it's really important because a lot of people are like, I don't know how to use this. Like this seems like underwhelming to me. And I'm like, like this is like the best $20 I spent each month. Like, you know, like it's like for value, like it's like I use it all the time. Like I, my Googling went down to like for, for actual work, my Googling went down like 95%. Like it's, it's mostly now I Google things to just make sure that chat GPT like didn't, like get something wrong or something like that. But otherwise, like I just don't even use it anymore. Yeah. I'm not quite as far down the chat GPT rabbit hole as says a lot of my peers, though I do use it. Um, I've been using AI more on the creative side and we'll have to talk some about just the impact of AI across everything at some point maybe that's a good uh a good january episode for us um and we should bring on somebody who has built maybe an ai plugin for wordpress that would be kind of a a cool topic yeah well yeah th- we have a couple of guest suggestions also coming so uh but yeah i agree but even even for me like it's more for creative work like because like programming is a creative like solution building tool and and that's like kind of how i use it more than as because i think people get this point and they're like chat gpt like build me a website and then it (laughs) is a pretty average job at it but if you use it as a kind of like as a creative tool as opposed to just uh just like do my work for me tool which i'm sure maybe chat gpt5 or something will get to that point but um like one of the things that I think resonated the most with me, like I listened to a podcast and they were saying like ChatGPT is like kind of like having like a thousand interns basically work for you, um, but they're not the best interns. So if you're really already an expert in something, ChatGPT will not make you like a much better expert at something that you're in. But if you're like me, I'm a generalist. Like I, I always wanted to do a generalist versus specialist like programmer thing, but I touch like a lot of, and if you're trying to level up your skill, like, like chat GPT will level you up to a much more closer to average at things that you're not that as good at. Like, you know, for me, for example, it's, I don't do as much JavaScript daily. So like, I use ChatGPT a lot for that, or I use ChatGPT for design, um, like to start talking about design, like how would you design a solution to do this? And then we talk a bit and then I get ideas with that. But that's kind of what I want to talk with people because I think people want to use it as just like, like free Fiverr basically. Yeah, and that's not what it is, right? It's 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 not what it is right now. It's not what it is right now. So it's not an engineer. It's a researcher, right? Yeah, or it's like a it's a really it's like your pair programmer. Like the way the way I best describe using ChatGPT is like pair programming. Except you're both the driver and uh, the passenger, but it's like basically working with somebody next to you who can do like. Hey, hey, how would you do this? And then you you t- you ask the passenger, right? Like in in uh, pair programming, they they have this analogy of the driver versus the passenger. So the driver is the one writing code, and then the passenger is the one like looking that you're doing everything correctly, or just like looking up documentation. So if you use ChatGPT more as a passenger, um, then it's really handy for that. So those are all things that I I want to cover because I think. There's some interest and I would, it's in my, it's in all our best interest to level up the WordPress communities, the developers, so that we can do more. Then we can be closer to Laravel. We've gone full circle, Zach. (laughs) I mean, we don't need to go much further than that. Um, Yeah, I think that uh, (laughs) 
It's been an interesting year because who would have thought that 2023 would be the year of of crafting prompts and understanding how to properly but that was like just such a short period it's true though like i forgot like at the beginning of 2023 it was all like prompt engineer is the is the job of the future and then chat gpt4 comes out and it's like now nah, you don't need prompt engineering i mean you need it for research like for security research like i just saw an article come out where they they managed to get to prompt uh chat gpt to like leak like training data oh wow i mean it's kind of wild like for like all the hackers and stuff i i love hackers like talking to them like their brain works so different um but yeah though but i remember at the beginning you're right at the beginning of 2023 it's like prompt engineer how to get like mid journey to get that perfect image exactly like what flags do I need to use to get this thing to be exactly the way I want it to be? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, prompt engineering still matters, right? The way you craft your prompt does matter because oh, done, yeah. it can lead to deeper results, right? You can, you can create a prompt that generates multiple variations on an answer just by creating the prompt correctly. Yeah. Or there was like something that came out like a month ago. Basically, Chad GPT gave better answers if you made it feel like you were in duress. Basically, like like said something like "I need this" or "I'll get fired." Or <laughs> uh, no, but it's true. Like if you ma- if you made it seem like you were in the, in some sort of of duress, it didn't have to be something as drastic as you'll get fired. But it's like this is really stressing me out. Like I don't think I can do this. Um, it would just give you a much better answer, which I thought was like, it, it's crazy. Basically, I don't really use that trick, but uh, but it's yeah. Like if you do better prompts, you'll get better answers for sure. Right, like the guy who created an entire e-commerce business based on just what Chat GPT told him to do, and he was he was using you know prompt crafting to uh, create this world where chat gpt was treating itself as an e-commerce expert right yeah yeah no i mean so a lot of people do that like they write like a really long prompt they like set it up like i've done that a couple of times where i'm like okay think as if you were you know a corporate lawyer or something like that like help me like understand um this stuff but yeah it's crazy what i would be curious to see with them is like what i struggle with is like it loses the plot after a while like like uh, so uh, they call that context basically it loses like it only has like a certain context window so i'm always like interested like the people that like do a lot of like the stuff like over a long period of time like how they make they manage to like keep it to it within context you know like so it doesn't like it, it is crazy and then yeah, so that's what I'd find interesting to learn about. That and hallucinations, right? Yeah. I feel well, it's getting better at that. Like It is, but it's still crazy that that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. I haven't suffered too many hallucinations lately. I feel like it's getting a bit better at that. Um, it's, it's not making things up as frequently. As frequently. Even for the coding stuff, like I remember like this summer... I had to double, ch- I, I would look at stuff and I'm like, this seems, I'll try it, but like, this seems like it won't work. Like, uh, and sometimes I would just catch it out- outright. I was like, no, I know this won't work. And they'd be like, my apologies. And, <laughs> you know, my apologies. Here's the correct answer. And it's like. Yeah. It suddenly corrects itself. But that's why it's their, their interns, right? It's a ten th- it's a thousand interns, right? So if you craft a really like if you give an intern a three sentence thing to do, you'll get a three sentence job out of the intern, right? But if you like write a detailed thing, that's like one of the misunderstood things about interns. It's like, <laughs> oh, I got this slave. I just can tell it to do whatever I want and I'll get good output. But it's it, you're managing someone. So like the input you give them impacts the output you'll get out of them. So chat GPT is like a lot like that. So it was just really, I love it. 
it's like I'm the biggest fan, but you know, without getting to all the doomer stuff, like I, I generally appreciate it for for my work. I feel like I can't think of a tool that's come out in like my career that has had s such a significant impact on me because it like I do generalist work, right? Like I do full stack, like cloud auditing, like all this stuff, uh, cloud architecture. And it's just like, sometimes it's just, you spend so much time just digging through things to just like, you know what you're trying to do, but you're like spending so much time digging through things. Like having access to somebody that like basically has like encyclopedic knowledge of things and be like, okay, like I'm trying to do this with this service. Like, like how do I do this again? Like, um, it just saves me so much time just digging through things and trying to find the right stack overflow question that was at, like on Google to like get the answer that I need. Like, oh my God. Like it's so for me, it's been a really transformational um, tool for me. Like that's why like I don't even rank like if you had to make me cut one copilot or or chat GPT, I would cut copilot without even like before the sentence even ended. Basically, I would say like copilot. Well, and so we'll save the rest of that discussion for when we have an episode about AI, but uh, it was definitely a theme of 2023, so we wanted to touch on it here. Yeah. I'm still curious how it used. I, I want to do an episode just to get a pulse of like how much it's used within the WordPress community, like um, because it's, I feel like it's not that widespread basically is it would be my educated guess but it was like like i'm not 100 percent sure well i think a lot of people don't want to pay for it so they use 3.5 and then they're like this is really average and then they don't try it but it's like it's so different between like four and the 3.5 like it's not i i remember trying 3.5 i'm like this is trash um this is like trash like i don't i don't this doesn't do anything for me but once i started using four completely different um completely different experience for me once uh but just my experience in tokyo when i was at the google office working it was on every screen oh of course and and here's the thing right i think it, it's more widespread in the wordpress community than we think it is because you know i was uh i was at Troy Dean's uh, Mavcon event in uh, in in Fairfax, Virginia, and one of the sessions that he ran was that was like last month, right? A couple months ago, yeah. Um, one of the one of the sessions that he he ran was on using Chat GPT to augment you know your knowledge base, right? To train Chat GPT on your knowledge base for your company so that it becomes an expert on all things your company and can answer questions for people. Yeah, those are things I haven't experimented with yet because that's relatively new. Like you can ask Chad GPT to create a, a, a GPT for like a specific thing. Like you can feed it like a couple of PDFs or like a, like a, like, or just train it to like, uh, somebody was saying like they read a lot of research papers. So they wanted a, a GPT that could like scan like research papers and give them the highlight of things. Uh, but yeah, like you could definitely have something like that as well for, for internal companies. Uh, GPTs on your documentation. Even having it be an external facing tool. Like let's say you want your support chat bot to be able to answer every question about anything that could possibly happen that a customer could have a question about based on the internal knowledge base that has been created for how to answer those questions, right? So for example, when I worked support at Apple, Apple has tens of thousands of knowledge base articles, right? If you were able to tra train chat GPT on that entire knowledge base of articles that have been created by, by Apple engineers over the years, uh, you would have a, a chat bot at that point that could answer questions about everything from um, how to write something 
in you know objective c to how to turn off your iphone because there are knowledge base articles on all of those things so very impressive what it what it can do with a private set of data like that and turning it into just an encyclopedia about your company and uh, a way to access it that feels human right so it's really cool yeah I'm, I'm i'm always on the lookout for for how people are using it essentially um like that's what i find interesting as well like thinking of use cases that you might not have thought about okay so we're obviously going to do an ai episode next year uh, hi ai in development so well, we probably have other AI topics, but definitely not AI and development. I mean, I, I want to talk about it. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm going to apply to work camps with that. Well, why don't we put a poll out there? Uh, Bob said that he'll do this for us. So Yeah, he'll do a, he'll do a poll. Let's put a poll out there about uh, what types of things people might want to hear about. And if you are doing... Or if you're using AI. Yeah, if you're doing a lot with AI... If you're using ChatGPT4. Yep. And uh, Bob is saying maybe we can have some people leave some audio snippets of uh, things they're doing with AI that we could talk about uh, on the show as well and just bring you into the show with us. I think that would be great. Um, but have it be more of a, a community-focused thing. And so we're going to talk about this over the next uh, the next month or so. Um, and talk with all of you about what it is you want to hear. <laughs> the next years. I, AI is not going anywhere, right? Um, just like uh, Sam Altman didn't go anywhere. He just uh, took a few-day break. And we, we will definitely be talking about this uh, in the near future. Um, but let's switch gears again just for a, a little while, and let's talk about people we'd like to bring on as guests. So if we had our our choice of dream guests for 2024, who would we want to bring? And I'm just going to start right at the top because I know he's going to say no, and he's said no a million times already, and uh, he'll probably continue to say no, but I would love to get Mike Jolly to come on and do a dev chat with us. Who's Mike Jolly? So he was one of the two engineers that started WooCommerce. At Woo Themes. Okay, okay. Mike would be great, but I'm open to other people from the Woo team that are in similar roles because I know it's not just Mike. Yeah, he's still there. Um, and he also wrote WP Job Manager. Uh, that that's one of his plugins that became an automatic plugin during the acquisition. Um, you know, great dude. Lots of great stuff that he's built over the years. And I think it'd be a lot of fun to have him on. You know, as he told me, he's not the podcast guy, right? That's not his thing. But it wasn't my thing before I started doing it. Carl, was it your thing before you started doing it? I think I knew I would be okay at podcasting because I'm, I'm a bit chatty. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a slight no, chatter. I'm a, sl- I'm a like, slight chatster, but uh, I don't know if I'm... I I. I think what held me back before, and I still think today, is just like I don't like I don't think I'm the best podcast host. Like I just like I'm. I think that's a different skill. It's hard with my ADHD. Like I I'm trying to get better at it, but you don't have to be the best. That's uh... I think that would that was what kept me away from podcasting and all the, the the editing and stuff. I mean, luckily we have Bob. Basically, Bob does all the things that I don't want to do about about. I just wrangle guests, basically. I uh, we wrangle guests. We do the networking thing. We bring people in. Yep, and and then I think that's that's important too. But having Bob as uh, a support to make sure that all of this happens and to keep us on track and organized and uh, make sure we show up at the right time to record these um, has been immensely helpful. And you know, every podcast needs somebody to produce right and bob is a great person for that producer role um and he's been invaluable into making the show a reality and making sure it continues because um if that were just up to me 
uh, probably wouldn't be as effective as it is. So let's all thank Bob. So that's hashtag thank Bob. Thanks, Bob. Don't forget to bug Bob, but also thank yes, Bob. So we have hashtag so. bug Bob and hashtag <laughs> thank Bob. So, and Carl, any any guests that you would love to bring in? Uh, I've been working on somebody that usually says no, but said yes. Uh, there's like uh, Tom McFarlane, mm. although I don't know if it'll be like for a dev chat personally, but we wanted to talk a bit about, I mean, we just, went, I don't, I don't want to reopen the chat GPT can of worm, but basically... We used to write a lot of content. Um, how uh, how ChatGPT is kind of changing the landscape of writing technical articles? Should you even do it? Uh, is there really a market for that? Um, uh, ties in a bit to like kind of like the SEO hellscape that is like basically Google now. Um, but I think for for specifically for Wu, I. I don't have anybody in mind because like I don't have as much like networking around that as you do, but I just would like to talk to more people doing cool stuff like scale. Like I I am I I think, you know, like one of the trends with Emir is I just want to do really epic things like, you know, AWS just announced that they 12x the scaling with with Lambda, so now you can add basically 100 PHP workers a second with this, and I'm just, like, <laughs> looking for people that are just, like, hungry to just, like, t- like take on, like, the Magentos and the big commerce and, and, like, take on these, like, large projects, like, whether it's, like, large SKUs, large, like, like order volume, like we were talking, like, at the beginning with Universal Yums, uh, like, I just like I find those things challenges interesting because like I I like to know like what is breaking right like you know where's the where are the wheels you know like in, in cartoons like you see the machine like starting to like there's there's like smoke coming out there's a couple of gears flying out like I I like learning about those things and even though it's not necessarily um applicable to everybody but i think there's lessons to learn even for all developers because even though they're at a massive scale it just teaches you about um how to be a better developer how to diagnose issues even if they're uh i find that that's really interesting to get the insight out of people for that i think that's really cool uh the other thing i want to focus on some is getting into more conversations about just enterprise WordPress in general. So really big installations of WordPress. And I think I might have a guess for us for that. Actually, eventually, actually they're, they're, they're like, they're in stealth mode. So I can't talk about them, but basically uh, like there's a startup that's doing something really crazy around that. So that'd be fun to have them come on. Well, and I think, that will be uh oh bob says it's already there yeah so powering enterprise with woo and wordpress so yeah that's true i forgot we 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 were talking about that yeah but i think there's a there's a huge interest from agencies and uh just bringing in like making open source like Oh, like basically uh, expanding the umbrella of what WordPress can do um, because, you know, like how you market to big companies um, is very different than how you market to medium sized companies or like or small businesses. So it's a very different ballgame. Uh, and there's a lot of interest in that. And there's a lot of opportunity because there's not a lot of open source products alternatives to like the magentos slash adobe commerce or the big commerce or or um sitecore is that sitecore yep sitecore adobe experience manager yeah that that kind of stuff yeah it's all the what they have traditionally called digital experience platforms um but i think we could definitely talk about how we compete, you know, as developers in 
open open source versus closed ecosystems, right? Yeah, or when it's like developing in an enterprise environment, like you know, what do you need? What what expect like, workflow expectations um, happen? Um, I mean, for me, that's one of the challenges with Emir. Like, it's just it's a it's a more enterprisey workflow, and people are like, "Wait, I can't do these things," and it's like, "No." Like, uh, my favorite one is like, you know, White House. The White House site is WordPress, and I tell them like. You know, Joe Biden can't go and install like Hello Dolly on right. on the White House yep. site. You know, uh, there's there's this is not how things work when you uh, work in those enterprise environments, right? Like, so how to be an enterprise developer is a really um, broad topic, or it's it's a different experience, and it's worth discussing it for people that not don't necessarily know like how how it works or or are used to certain things. Um, so that's definitely a thing. That's definitely something we should do, actually. Now that I'm like thinking about it, like I'm like, we'll put a spin on it and make it fit the, uh, the, the dev chat model. Uh, so Bob, there you go. We'll, we'll have a dev chat about uh, enterprise development workflows. I think that's a great one. And some of the unique challenges when you're building things that have to scale at that level and that have to work just, work all the time no matter what um so that that would be a really cool episode um but really the most important thing is what you as listeners want to hear so if you have topic ideas again hashtag bug bob uh we're going to uh have you it's the best part of this episode <laughs> hashtag or have you bug Bob with what you want to uh fast I bug Bob best discovery of this episode take it away <laughs> absolutely uh we're gonna have you bug Bob with what you want to hear about uh if you have ideas for people who uh could be a guest even if that idea is yourself please reach out to Bob uh let him know and uh if you'd like to sponsor also the woo dev hashtag bug Bob hashtag bug Bob uh, you know, yeah, we are, uh, we are definitely looking for sponsors for the dev chats. So if your audience is developers and you want to speak to our audience in, in a way that, uh, is only possible by, well, being a part of what it is we do here on the woo dev chats, uh, talk to Bob hashtag bug Bob and, uh, get in there. Hashtag bug Bob. <laughs> And uh, talk to him about sponsoring this insanity we call the Woo Dev Chat that happens every month. Love it. Uh, with a, a few exceptions here and there. But uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have uh, some sponsors get involved with what we do here. Uh, we want to grow what we do and serve our developer community. And, you know, I, I realize that, you know, Bob's mission of helping builders means builders of all types, right? And we serve the, you know, the people who are trying to level up. And that's been my goal the whole time, right? We want people to be able to level up, to, to learn more about this side of what it is to be in the WooCommerce space and, you know, building solutions that can scale, that consider things like the things we talk about, um, so we want to continue bringing episodes like this to you. Uh, and the best way to, co- you know, to help make sure that that continues to happen uh, is to become a sponsor. So just hashtag bug Bob and uh, tell him uh, about all about the monies you want to give him. Monies, all of them. Um, apart from that, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure serving all of you. Uh, as your co-hosts for the Do The Woo dev chats. Um, we, we love being a part of this community. Uh, I find it enriching. And, uh, you know, it's something I look forward to every month. Um, Carl, I think you probably feel the same way. Of course. Do it from all over the planet. You know, even in the middle of the night. Even in the middle of the night in Japan, so definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, 
you know, it, it is something I look forward to every month. And I hope that you feel the same way as listeners. If you have any feedback, again, hashtag bug Bob. Uh, we're going to make this a thing that will stick forever. So hashtag bug Bob. And with that, uh, we want to wish you all a great holiday season. We may be back in some form uh, next month for a uh, Do the Woo episode, but uh, I think we're taking December off from the Woo Dev Chat, and we'll be back with you in January. So uh, unless something really drastic happens, and in which case we will be here uh, to record an episode if it's needed. So... Um, but we appreciate all of you who listen to us babble on about the things we love and, uh, that we're passionate about and hope that, uh, some of that passion brings you into places you haven't been before. So thank you for going on this journey with us. Yeah. Thank you. And see you next year. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Zach and Carl for a year of woo dev chat. I give them a bad time, but I love these two guys and cannot wait to see what they come up with in 2024. And as I mentioned, if you're interested in being on the show or sponsoring, remember hashtag bug Bob on Twitter or X or whatever you call it. I have a feeling I may regret the day that was ever mentioned, but Hey, bug Bob. That's a hashtag. And of course, thanks to Avalara and Hostinger for their support throughout 2024. If you run into either of their teams at a WordCamp, please thank them personally for their support of this community. And watch for our end of the year chat wrap up coming later this month with some hosts and myself. If you'd like to leave an audio comment or question that we'll play on that show, and heck, we could even have some fun with it, just go to dothewoo.io forward slash voices. So until the next time, 